Hi there, thanks for tuning in. In today's video, I'm going to take the RSI, one of the most popular trading indicators, and put it to test. I'm going to test it using specialized software to determine what is the best RSI period to use, and also what is the best RSI trigger level to use when trading. To do that, I will optimize this indicator on over 200,000 trades in the US stock market, over the past 22 years of history and share my findings with you so that you can then take them away and build your own trading system based on the RSI. If you haven't come across my channel before, my name is David and on my channel I share various trading ideas and my research that I do as a part of my own algorithmic trading journey. I employ a mechanical approach, meaning that I test all my trading ideas and strategies using professional software so that I can share the accurate historical backtests with you to help you on your own trading journey. Now, I'm not going to explain in detail how the RSI is calculated, but in general, it is what's commonly referred to as a trading oscillator. I have it shown below my price chart in yellow, and we can see that it tends to oscillate in a certain range of values denoted by the two red horizontal levels. The RSI I have on my screen at the moment is calculated using the last 20 bars. Typically, since RSI is an oscillator, it is used to trade against the shorter market's momentum once the RSI crosses below its bottom extreme. For example, here we can see that it crosses below the bottom red level, which would be a buy setup. In this particular case, it would have worked, as you can see that the market has reversed at that point. The rationale of using RSI in this way is to find short-term reversals in the market. It's when the RSI gets to its extreme levels, market is likely to reverse. But what exact RSI period to use and what exact trigger levels to choose. In this example, I'm using level 40 as the bottom level, but perhaps we can get better results when using a different level. Same goes for the RSI period. I'm using 20, but how would the results differ if I use 10, for instance? Well, let's have a look at what the data is telling us. As always, I'm going to write a simple code and have it validated on historical data. I'm not going to do anything by hand as it introduces a lot of human error potential and is very time consuming. I ran optimization of the RSI period ranging from 2 to 20 on all US stocks that belong to Russell 2000 index, so 2000 stocks at any given time. The range I ran this analysis on was from year 2000, so just over 22 years. The total aggregate trade count of all these iterations shown on my screen is in excess of 200,000. So let's see how this data looks like when visualized. This bar chart shows the total net profit by RSI period. The relationship is very clear here. The shorter the RSI period is, the greater the net profit. This on its own, however, doesn't really do the justice though, because the net profit is a direct result of the trade count. Now, as the RSI period rises, the trade count decreases resulting in lower overall profit. Let's therefore have a look at one of my most favorite metrics that I look at when developing my algorithmic trading systems, the Sharpe ratio. I'll make a separate video on this subject at some point, and so I'm not going to go into too much detail, but in general, this ratio essentially translates into how consistent the profit and loss distribution is. Greater the ratio, the better. In this case, the lowest RSI period, number two, has shown the highest Sharpe ratio overall, which obviously suggests that this is the best period to choose. I'm therefore going to take the RSI two. Next up, let's determine the trigger level. Looking at the backtest results of trading RSI two and buying the SPY, which is the ETF that tracks the overall um, US stock market represented by S&P 500. Whenever this indicator is below the level of 50, we can see that the actual RSI value can differ quite a bit. What we'd like to do is to limit RSI entries further by saying that we only buy the market when the RSI's value is below a certain trigger level 40, for instance. This should filter out some of the trades uh, that we can see in this table, but is likely to improve the results. And again, 
as I like to quantify everything in my trading rather than to assume based on a couple of cherry picked trading setups, let's have a look at what the data is telling us. On this screen, we can see a chart that shows a relationship between the RSI 2 level shown on the horizontal axis and the resulting size of a profit on the trade in percentual terms shown on a vertical axis. The most important element of this chart is the red line in its center though, which if you look closer is not perfectly horizontal. It rises ever so slightly to the left, uh, which suggests that there is a relationship between the RSI level and the size of trades profit. The lower the trigger level is, the greater the profit tends to be in general. So let's take this further and apply this on the chart. This is a daily chart of a stock ticker AKYA. I applied RSI with period of two with the bottom level of five, which I've taken from the previous chart. And this level is denoted by the horizontal line uh, colored red. Over here, RSI got below the trigger level, meaning that this would be our trading setup we would buy this stock using the RSI with period of two. And lastly, this is the equity curve of this simple RSI 2 trading setup. Trading costs are included and the test was conducted on all Russell 2000 stocks starting from the year 2000. Now, as I was just testing the general trading idea, I assumed that unlimited number of trading setups can be traded at any given time and a basic exit of a first update following the trade entry was used, as I always use it when validating just the trading setup idea. You can take this idea and develop it into an actual trading strategy. If you like this video and uh, looking for more quantified trading ideas or strategies, then have a look at this video I just linked on the screen for you, as I think you'll like it too. Thanks for watching. This is David at Critical Trading, and I'll see you in the next one.